Bar and came all the way here. He also recently became a water sommelier in Wisdom Rhine Water Academy. And I was truly fascinated by his final project, which was about water and tea. And Michael is really pushing the envelope here, so I'm very much looking forward to his presentation. Sun Bernardo from, uh, from Italy, 
which has a higher GDS level, but uh, for some reason it really matches the, the uh, and really amplifies the flavor profile of uh, the tea. So there's some some waters uh, which really have the ability um, to really amplify uh, the, the, the message and the, the flavor uh, composition uh, of, uh, of the product. <coughs> And it's really about testing different teas with different water to really find like a, like a good, uh, good solution to the flavor. But, but my vision is really like the problem in, in the beginning of this, uh, this summit is uh, since the trend is really to, to market both products uh, together. So I just have here an example of how I could envision in a, in a few years being a tea which really is tried on a, on a, on a menu. And we're still, I think, seeing in a lot of uh, restaurants that, uh, that both water and tea are kind of stuck at the, at the end of the, of the menu. I think with water menus, and uh, later with uh, the Sam, we're, we're getting into that. Uh, uh, we have, I think, have the opportunity to really bring uh, waters as well as teas uh, out to the, the front and center of uh, the restaurant experience. So I can really see, with just an example, to see a description of a 2018 first flush Darjeeling from a Gonzana single um, estate plantation fruit and aqua, a fresh uh, aqua life uh, um, mineral water. So really bring out both uh, terroirs, bring out uh, both elements uh, of that product, and I think that's an opportunity for both the tea industry as well as for the water industry. But the second thing um, I want to focus on, and I'm very passionate about it, is, is uh, the, the whole area of uh, combining uh, uh, water and food. And you saw it yesterday, I think it was a great experience to really match and pair the different waters with, uh, with different foods. And uh, what I normally do in Myanmar when, when I have uh, water tastings, uh, I like at the end, I like to bring the, the tea in. So it just adds another dimension uh, to it. And uh, uh, the, the, the unique experience uh, you get from the, from the tea is that, uh, for instance, if I have a, a pairing between a cheese or a water, which I do a lot in, uh, in water tastings, by bringing in a uh, um, tea, you also then add the temperature. And you start seeing the, how the tea and, uh, and the, the cheese are interacting and creates a different uh, creamy textures, and then you can also have comparison between the, the flavor impact on the water, the flavor impact on the, on the tea. So that's something which, uh, which I like to do uh, a lot here in, in uh, Kenya, doing the same thing, and this is like an example of, uh, of a tasting I just recently did uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Myanmar. Uh, the third area I would, I would like to, to explore is uh, um, how to describe a taste. And that's something which inspired me from the from the tea industry because that was a big part of uh, and still is part of my uh, tea journey and really describing well how can you really um, communicate to a, to a um, to a client or to a consumer to describe the taste. I mean a lot of, and I think in, in both industries we're we're, we're sometimes a bit uh, challenged in, uh, in that. And uh, um, I got really inspired by um, one of my mentors, uh, which is uh, um, Madame Chengji. She owns a house in, uh, in uh, Paris and uh, she has done a marketing campaign for, for Nestle describing a number of teas but what I got out of it is, uh, is really the way she is able to describe uh, waters and the way she is able to describe certain uh, terms. So for instance here you have her description of uh, San Pellegrino. I just read it out quickly. The nose is fundamentally choppy with a citrus almost fruity flavor not to mention a hint of uh, almond with its lively texture. It's very rich in variety. The distinctive taste of San Pellegrino is this sharp lemony effect reminiscent of uh, lemon juice giving it an acidic bite. And I think uh, for me, uh, I kind of like got, got a lot of thinking, like how can I describe uh, water? Like what are the different uh, elements uh, to really communicate or let other people uh, describe uh, water? And what I did in, the, in my tea studies is uh, um, we have this, this, this tool in the, in the, in the, in the tea club industry on the, on the tea wheel because uh, it gives, gives you an opportunity to really um, pinpoint and describe like well, how is how can you best describe this taste. I mean, my my uh, teacher in the in the uh, the Walti Academy always was very punishing, uh, and sometimes I just describe the tea in terms of it's fruity or it's sweet or it's, it's you really have to go down to the level of uh, what kind of uh, um, sweetness are you talking about, what kind of uh, um, fruit are you talking about. And the tea wheel really helps you to kind of like uh, get into a different segment and then once you taste and really connect and really find a, a good description uh, for that uh, particular word. This is the same, for instance, in the Fine Water Academy, whenever we use the word uh, pure, then we always got, uh, got uh, punished for, for, for the day. Um, so what, what I did is, uh, and it's actually the first time I'm showing this, I mean, it's, uh, it's something which, uh, which I tried to bring that, uh, that uh, um, 
knowledge from the from the, the tea industry, and then I'm really showing it to you the first time. I haven't really published or anything marketed to anywhere. Is can, can we develop a, a water wheel? It's something which uh, which will help you or to, to in order your communication with uh, with the customer in really describing uh, a water taste and then giving them an experience uh, <coughs> of uh, different types of uh, waters and uh, how can they connect and best describe this taste. So what I, what I did here is the, 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 the front part of the, of the wheel and uh, it, it's a bit complicated because it's not like a one-to-one -one match to the, the tea industry but I tried to combine uh, both the, the, the still waters and the, the sparkling waters and it kind of it follows pretty much the the, the categories of the, the fine water society almost it's, uh, it's, it's, it's close there but uh, I try to, to, to match certain categories with uh, with my personal impressions and my personal uh, um, observations when it comes to a certain taste and for, for a certain water and a certain uh, category and um, that's something which uh, which you could use for 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 your tastings and just give it to a, to a customer and let them play around with it and let them describe uh, on the, how would they feel or how would they describe a certain uh, taste. On the back side of, uh, of the, the, the water wheel, I try to remove it a little bit from the, from the categories and really give, uh, give more of an experience uh, where they can then, uh, um, it still follows the same kind of impressions, but uh, it's more uh, more broader categories, is it more soft uh, tasting water, is it more bold uh, tasting waters, so that they can be like kind of, um, as they go to a, to a flight, uh, go to a water tasting of a different flight, they can really connect to, to that uh, experience. Uh, the next area I want to highlight is uh, what I also in my final assignment for the for the Fine Water Academy I call the, the world of hope. So I feel that uh, that there's a is a huge uh, trend uh, in the tea industry now um, to really enhance the quality of uh, of uh, cold tea. In particular, in the U.S., uh, the, the, the iced tea market is uh, is really now getting to a stage where uh, uh, consumers are really looking for for a higher quality, not just a, a glass of uh, of uh, iced tea with some ice in it. But they're really starting to ask questions in terms of uh, what's in it, like what is the the um, the, uh, the, the quality, what is what kind of tea they're using, <clears throat> and in particular the, the ready to drink teas, the bottle teas you get in the supermarket. That's a category that also sees a big spike in terms of uh, uh, the, the quality and the type of teas which are flowing uh, in there. I think uh, it's a it's a whole area, and I will highlight the two elements in that uh, in that part of the industry, which uh, which would be an opportunity for you as a, as a water brand and really exploring and really trying to something new with, uh, with your, your product. But um, the first thing I want to highlight is uh, sparkling teas, which is really fast growing in the, in the tea industry. And, uh, and we, we're seeing a lot of uh, growth and uh, there's a lot of brands now coming onto the, the market and really allowing a different experience, uh, not just uh, a, a tea which, which is based on, the, on, the, on the still water, but really you bring that sparkling uh, element uh, into, into the, the product. The second thing I want to highlight is, uh, and I started to experiment that uh, since, since about half a year now, is uh, the experience of uh, ice cubes uh, in, uh, in tea. To me, that adds just like another layer, another dimension uh, for, for you to, to experiment. Uh, so you can, on one hand, you have uh, water which you brew the tea with, which uh, in, in normal case would come with a low minerality, but also gives you the opportunity now to, to add the ice cubes, in particular for, for cold drink, for, for, for iced tea, with a different uh, type of water or even with a different uh, minerality. And I feel that's, a, that's an opportunity, for instance, to have uh, uh, high quality tea, but then adding uh, to it uh, um, an ice cube from a, from a different uh, water, even with a high minerality, which then slowly goes into the, the, the Still, the very beginning of, uh, of, uh, of the studies uh, to see what the flavor impact uh, really is. But uh, even by freezing uh, um, sparkling teas into ice cubes, you get a good texture and gives like, a very interesting uh, experience uh, for a customer. The last area, the fifth area I want to highlight, is uh, the area of, uh, of wellness. We do not talk about health in the, in the, in the, in the Fine Water Academy. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, wellness, I think, is it's a big, uh, big area. I think uh, both industries as well as the tea industry as well as the water industry have a, have a interest in really trying to market it in a way uh, and it's something which uh, is more and more becoming uh, relevant uh, for for a customer just to give you a, an example on the lower end as you, you see me in uh, 2017 and on the right end you see me after studying with uh, the fine water <laughs> 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 so, so that's not saying that, uh, not saying that it's only just because of the water I drink between these, these two, two times but uh, <laughs> but it really, it, 
Yes, sir. 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 Yes
please and, and what water can uh, go well. Yeah, so that's a very good uh, question. And uh, there, there is actually on uh, um, on the, 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 the fine waters uh, webpage, there's a, there's a link. And uh, my final assignment is, uh, is linked uh, to that. And uh, there's, there's a whole set of uh, videos uh, where I'm going into um, comparing different uh, types of teas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm start, I also experimented with uh, different different waters. I mean, it's difficult to put like a like a, um, a, a general kind of uh, answer answer to that because really it depends on the on the type of, uh, of tea. So like for instance, uh, uh, green teas or, or white teas uh, have a much different uh, sensitivity to, to the type of waters you use than than, than for instance the, the black tea would uh, would be. So like a more bolder flavor uh, will will react differently to to minerality and water than than a, a very sensitive uh, white tea or, or green tea. A lot of it, I think, is uh, is is try trying things uh, out, but uh, I think the important thing is that, uh, which also in the tea industry, very few people still recognize, but I think it will come, is that uh, the the star in the, in the tea is really the the, um, the 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 flavor the tea master has has envisioned, and uh, um, they, a lot of people they they um, put a lot of attention on uh, and, and the tea masters spend uh, days. Day and night uh, to, to develop a producer tea, but then very little attention goes to what water am I using for that. And then some people might be disappointed and surprised uh, if they don't get the flavor they had expected from, from the tea, not realizing that they're not using the right water to, to, to do so. And I think uh, by paying attention to that, you can really enhance the, the flavor profile and then really make, make it a better product than just like a pouring tap water into it. Really fascinating. I really encourage you to go to Fine Waters and look up the water sommeliers where we have the, the final project. It's hours and hours of videos, you know, detail explaining things. Just one more quick thing. I was really fascinated by your experiment with sparkling water. You mentioned sparkling tea, but all of us probably thought it's tea and then I put some sparkling water into the tea or something. But you're experimenting brewing tea with sparkling water, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it comes back to the the, the world of uh, cold tea. I, mean, I think most most of it, uh, when they think about uh, tea, they think about the uh, hot water and they think about uh, pouring the, the hot water over the, the tea leaves. But uh, um, what an area I like a lot is uh, is the area of uh, cold brew. It takes a bit longer. It's not that instant uh, gratification you get if you pour water over over a tea bag. But uh, for instance, uh, you you can take high quality tea, you put it into a glass pitcher, you put it into the fridge for for six to eight hours. And you get a totally different product than, than you would get a hot tea because it will take out all the, the, the edges and all the, the acidity in a, in a tea and you get a much smoother and much mellow um, product uh, in, in the end. I think that's something where it allows them also then to experiment with, uh, with sparkling waters because you can, uh, it, 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 it definitely will, will, uh, will have a different uh, level of carbonation by the time it, it becomes a tea, but it's still a very interesting your product because uh, you still have that uh, nice soft mellow kind of taste of, uh, of the, the cold brew tea and uh, with uh, that, uh, that uh, um, effect of a, of a sparkle still in it. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's something worth uh, trying. I think that's really interesting. Thank you very much.